Right, we're going to have a look at a couple of exam questions about halo alkanes. So this one over here, we've got one bromobutane and that reacts with methoxide ions uh, by nucleophilic substitution. And then it asks how methoxide ion can act as a nucleophile. So a nucleophile is one that has a pair of electrons to donate. It's an electron pair donor. And methoxide ions um, does have an electron pair um, a lone pair of electrons on the oxygen. Um, so the answer here is it can donate a pair of electrons. Next one, so using the curly arrow model, suggest the mechanism for this reaction and show any relevant dipoles. So we can draw out the molecule And it also says to draw any relevant dipoles and the CBR bond is a polar bond, which means it has a dipole across it. So we've got delta positive on the carbon, delta negative on the bromine. Um, the methoxide ion here is acting as the nucleophile. So we show a lone pair of electrons on the oxygen. Curly arrow going from the lone pair on the oxygen to the carbon delta positive and then you show the CBr bond breaking by curly arrow going from the bond to the Br delta minus. That then forms this product over here which is butan 1-ol. And don't forget that the other product of this mechanism is your Br minus with the lone pair. Okay, so in terms of how marks are allocated, you get one mark for um, this first curly arrow over here. So going from the lone pair on the methoxide to carbon, you get a second mark for the correct dipole and for this curly arrow going from the CBr bond to the Br. And your third mark is for uh, drawing the correct products and that's both of these products here. Right, next question, so continued on from that one, it's saying that one iodobutane also reacts with methoxide ions. Indicate by placing a tick in one of the boxes how the use of one iodobutane would affect the rate of reaction compared to one bromobutane. Okay, so essentially what they're asking here is what's the difference between the hydrolysis of these two bonds. So this is the one that breaks in iodobutane, this is the one that breaks in bromobutane. Um, as we know, the CI bond has a lower bond enthalpy um, compared to CBR, and therefore this one um, breaks faster. Okay, so therefore one iodobutane increases the rate in comparison to bromobutane. Um, and in terms of explaining it, um, the C I bond enthalpy is lower, sorry, lower um, than the CBR bond. And that's your one mark there. Right, next question. So a student carries out an investigation to compare the rates of hydrolysis of one iodo propane and one bromopropane. Uh, they heat hot aqueous sodium hydroxide with each um, halogen alkane or haloalkane um, and found that one iodopropane was hydrolyzed faster, as we would expect. Um, they've given us the equation and they're asking us to outline the mechanism for this reaction. So we've got, we've now got one iodopropane You could do this in the skeletal form if you want to do nothing wrong with that. And again, the CI bond is a polar bond. So we draw a dipole across that bond. We've then got hydroxide ions. So OH minus with a lone pair 
on the oxygen, curly arrow starts from the lone pair, goes to the carbon delta positive, and then the carbon iodine bond breaks with a curly arrow going from the bond to the I minus. That then forms our propan one ol. And again, the other product, as always, is the halide ion that you've kicked out. And in this case, it is the I minus. The name of this type of mechanism. Um, so we've got the OH minus coming in and substituting the iodide ion um, or the halide. Um, and therefore, this is a substitution reaction. Um, and because we've got a nucleophile, in this, this is called nucleophilic substitution. Next question, so explain why one iodopropane is hydrolyzed faster than one bromopropane. Um, so again, it's a very similar argument to the one before. Um, so the carbon iodine bond um, has a lower bond enthalpy to um, the CBR bond and therefore the CI bond requires less energy to break. Okay. Um, next one over here, we've got chloro chlorofluoroalkane CFCs. Um, and they were developed from fluoroalkanes and used in aerosols in refrigerants. Um, they then said that it's been banned and replaced with any other things and then suggest two reasons why there's still a concern about ozone depletion. Um, so even though they have been Band. okay cfc's might still be used so cfc's um might still be used and therefore releasing cfc's into the atmosphere another thing is is that it takes a while for these cfc's to actually reach um the ozone layer okay because it, it's quite a long journey for them to do um so it takes time so even though you know they may be banned now uh, the ones that have already been released um, take time, so it takes time for um, CFCs to reach the ozone layer. So as I said, they've already been released, nothing we can do about that. Um, I know it says two marks, but nothing wrong with putting more points down. Um, the other thing is, it's not um, just CFCs that contribute to ozone depletion. Uh, so there are other substances like we've looked at the nitrogen uh, monoxide radical that can contribute to ozone depletion. Um, so other substances like the NO radical formed by lightning And contribute to ozone depletion. Okay, the last question over here was to find the error. So essentially, you need to know the correct answer for um, this one over here, so with the aid of equations, how the presence of CFCs can lead to ozone depletion. Uh, so for this one, you need to write what the steps are um, for the CFCs to form radicals and then those radicals reacting with ozone to break it down. So over here, you can pick any CFC. Um, I've gone for CF2, Cl2. So the initiation step, so this is the initiation step, so under UV, um, that will break, so it's the carbon chlorine bond that breaks to form this radical and a chlorine radical. So that's correct. Okay, we've shown um, one of the bonds between the carbon and the chlorine uh, breaking to form two radicals, and that is technically the initiation step. 
The next step is then that chlorine radical reacting with ozone. So when the chlorine radical reacts with ozone, what it does essentially is pluck off an oxygen. So this here is incorrect. So if I rub that out, um, sorry, I just rubbed out another thing as well. So let's rub this out. So it's going to pluck off an oxygen and that will become a chlorine oxygen radical. And then that leaves behind O2. Okay, that ClO radical now needs to react in the next step. I'm just going to rub all of this out. So that chlorine oxygen radical now reacts with oxygen to release the chlorine radical again and another O2 molecule. Okay. Um, so in this process, ozone has reacted with oxygen um, to break down into two O2 molecules. So you get one mark for this, one mark for this, and one mark for this. Technically, the overall reaction that has occurred, so if you did want to write this down, is O3 plus O goes to two O2.